Hi everyone, it's Finola Howard and this is a new time for us for Ask Finola How and it's kind of appropriate I think for the subject matter. But welcome back, it's been a few weeks since we did an Ask Finola How and I want to share with you a little bit, a little something about this. This week's episode is one that I've been trying to record for a few weeks now. And it's kind of interesting for me because it's all about self-care. <laughs> and I always find this really interesting because uh, your customers always teach you what you most need to learn. I have found that on my journey and I've been in business for over 25 years. And I always learn something from my customers and then from my customers. And the question that came up a few weeks ago, because I think we've missed about two weeks, three weeks, and the question was, let me read it to you, because, yeah, anyway, you'll get what I'm talking about in a second. So it's, how do you keep up your self-care routine when things get busy, like when you're launching a new program? Do you have any tips on prioritizing yourself and your health when business gets really busy? And of course, stuff got really busy for me when I had to do this Ask Finola How episode. So I had to defer it. And... It's just really interesting. <laughs> so, because I really did, and I think we did notes about this a couple of days ago, that I just didn't want to sit here and talk about I have it all together all the time, because I don't, because nobody does. Nobody does. That's the reality. All we can do is our best to protect ourselves, to serve ourselves, to support ourselves in any point. And I kind of wanted to reflect on, and I'm still kind of coming out the end of being really sick. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm pretty good now. I'm kind of, you know, another couple of days and I should be kind of back to my old self, my new self, whatever you want to look at it. So I kind of want to do a shout out to somebody who I saw on social media today, also did a post on this because they were faced with the decision of, they were also launching a program or starting a program and they made the decision to postpone it. And I just really want to do a shout out because it's really important that we as entrepreneurs share this with other people so that you don't feel so alone when it's happening because it happens to all of us. So a big shout out to brave, wonderful Sinead Doohan from at, on Instagram, you'll see her at thehappyme.ie and you'll see her website, thehappyme.ie. And she shared this decision that she'd made about her business, which is just in parallel for me also. So I have a lot of stuff going on. I've had a lot of stuff going on and things are all kind of coming right now again. And I was sick in the middle of it. So all is good. Here's what I've learned <laughs> so that I could actually speak from a place of humility, <laughs> which is a really good thing to do, you know? And I mean, I'm very strong on self-care and all the rest of it, but sometimes your self-care routine can just get thrown by the wayside when you're in the thick of it, you know, when you're in the thick of stuff. And it's when sometimes the stuff all happens all at the same time. So you have to kind of navigate it. So let me just share with you what I think and what I feel. And I tell you, this is an ongoing learning process. <laughs> That's the other thing I'll share with you. So let me, I've bullet points for myself like I normally do. So here, here I go, okay? The first thing I suppose I want to say to you is remember it's autumn. This is flu season, virus season and school returning season, which means that's when all the kids go back to school, which means that you could get sick too. And that's actually what happened to me. And it's so when you're thinking about launching or doing anything in your business, remember there are times during the year that things don't always work out so great. But anyway, this time of year, just remember this is autumn and autumn brings with it you know summer leaves the t-shirts leave and the cold comes in and all that kind of stuff we have a change in temperature and other things are happening as well and what was really interesting this was really really interesting for me because i was like for god's sake i just do all this stuff i take all these vitamins what's going on and i remember going into the do i went to the doctor the health food store and the pharmacist and every single one of them said to me, Fanola, you're doing everything right. I actually think, and I was kind of disappointed <laughs> because I actually, th I was actually disappointed that they told me I was, I was doing everything all right until I had time to reflect on it. I probably haven't fully reflected on it, 
But you kind of want to to feel like, no, 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 give me the thing that will fix it. And then you actually have to realize, no, you, you just have to go through this. This is something you just have to go through right now. And um, maybe up your dose of garlic finola and take a stronger painkiller that will help you physically as well. But you are actually doing everything right. And we give ourselves such a hard time often that we forget to go, this is a time to stop. And it will take longer to recover if you don't have that break, that time to stop. There is a point where you are doing everything you can do and you just have to rest. And that for me was something I will continue to learn because sometimes I like to just keep going. So I stopped a bit, but I say this to you, realize that sometimes you just have to stop. It's autumn, you got a virus, there was nothing you could do about it. Relax, that's all. There's no deep wisdom here. <laughs> Just stop. Yeah? Okay, that's one thing I've learned. Okay? The other thing that I've learned as well is, because it was more than just me being sick, I was I had stress going on in other parts of my life, right? So the other thing that I kind of want to say to you is, establish a self-care routine that you never want to break. Now, if you're flat on your back in bed and sniffles and all the rest of it, you know, the self-care is actually caring for that state of illness and all the rest of it. But there's other things that happen in your life that are outside of your control. They are just external stress factors. And I kind of needed to say to myself, and this is really interesting because I did a podcast about this recently. And it was, and it is this thing of establish the self-care routine that you never want to break, whether it's that you swim every day. Now, I couldn't swim every day because I was actually physically sick. But maybe there was a walk every day. When you're beyond the, you know, beyond the, the phys when the physical stuff is okay and it's actually stress related, make sure you don't break your own self-care routine. It's your release valve. It is the space where if, if it's to go for a walk on your own, not caring for others because you've got to self-care so that you are able to be there for those that you love and that you support in life that we all have these people in our lives. So do your swim, do your walk, do your run, do your cycle, do your kind of loud music on your headphones, do your quiet to only hear your own voice. Go and have a laugh with your friends, have some fun. You need a stress reliever. You need this lovely piece of self-care that honors who you are and protects you so that you can keep going. So make sure that your self-care is not something that you feel you should be doing, but something that you love to do. I mean, I talk about that all the time, about you know it being joyful and all that kind of stuff. This is when the joy matters. This is when the joy matters. When you need it most, it'll keep you going. So getting back into the sea was just so powerful for me. And even getting back into the sea on Sunday, we got back into the sea playing in the waves. And then I got into a sauna afterwards. The park, it's a hot pod and it parks beside the, um, the beach. We just had a laugh. And check out the podcast that I did with Thor A. Rain. And they have this wonderful piece of advice about the whole business is actually formed around this idea of first aid for feelings, firstaidforfeelings.com. Check them out because you know, it's this idea of we know what to do for ourselves physically, but sometimes we don't know what to do for ourselves and our feelings and what we need as support. Great resource. Check them out. Listen to the podcast episode. You'll get so much from that. And on reflection, it's such a really good one to think about. So caring for yourself at this time. Don't break your own self-care in preference to everybody else. Look after that piece. Yeah, here's the other one. For dealing with external stress, the thing that I would, because I noticed even this just became so clear for me in the last uh, period of time, which is the one when there's external stress outside of your control, the meditation piece is so powerful. Even 10 minutes in that day, if you did nothing else, that meditation piece, and I know people struggle with meditation. I have to recommend you this, this, uh, the app called Waking Up app. It's, it's just so powerful. 10 minutes 
where nothing is in your world except your breath. 10 minutes of breath where you will be distracted as you start, but 10 minutes where nothing matters, only that breath gives your whole being a relief and a break from all of this stuff. And what happens as you do this every single day or three times a week or whatever it is, but every daily practice so powerful means that, and I, and I remember just doing this, I had a few days ago, I had a really tough thing and I just went, I don't have any answers. I don't have any answers. What can I do? I can meditate. That's what I can do. And I sat and I meditated. And the meditation is not to problem solve. The meditation is to breathe. The meditation is to take the breath, to take you out of that space, to have this moment of freedom from everything that's going on in your life. And it's that moment that helps you later to have the clarity. You're not problem solving in the meditation. You're taking a break from it all so you can sit and be one with the universe or however you like to term it. But all you're doing is focusing on breath. Afterwards, as you do that, answers will come to help you solve those stressful situations, to get to the root of, it, of how to solve it. The answers will come because your brain had a break. Trust that. It's really important. The other thing that I find after that, my next piece of advice is around journaling. So here's an interesting one, right? I have a couple of purposes behind my journal and one is to capture uh, my own entrepreneurial journey because I intend to write a book and I capture how I feel at certain stages. So sometimes I journal at a tough period of time where there's stress and I journal so I don't forget it. So it's captured somewhere so I can use it in the book. It's my pragmatic self. And then I meditate and then I journal afterwards. And oh my God, the difference. It's like somebody different wrote it. So these two things are really powerful. One, to meditate, to have this break from everything, to give this time to yourself. It allows you not to be triggered so much. It allows you to have this, this space where you can come home to yourself. Again, another podcast episode is really interesting with Dr. Julie Mean. Check that one out. But this meditation period, really good. But to journal afterwards is allows you to process, allows your brain to, in its, in its state of calmness, having meditated, you get to have this time to then allow the answers to come. The journaling is powerful. It helps breakthrough. I recommend it to so many people on my courses, with my clients. It just unlocks stuff. This writing physically with a pen is just a really powerful thing that helps you unlock blocks. Highly recommend it. It has helped me so much over the years. And I also have. I'm, then I'm also writing my book as I go. So it's, you know, I always kind of want to be double dipping. So, okay. The other thing I kind of want to bring to your attention is remember you are more than your business. You are ultimately more than your business. You are a mother, a daughter, a brother, a sister, a all these things. And you are meant to have a beautiful life where you can laugh, love, be, enjoy, all of that stuff. So nothing else really matters. So if you miss, like I have missed, and I apologize for missing, but I'm not that sorry for missing Ask Finola How for a few weeks because I couldn't come with my best self to you. I couldn't come and say I have all the answers because I didn't. I needed to find them for myself first. So you are more than your business. And when you are ready to come with your best self, you will come back. You will come back faster, better, wiser for having given yourself what you needed to help yourself so then you could move on to help others. Remember that. Okay, so let me get very practical now for a few minutes because one of the key things was around a launch period. How do you take care of self-care during a launch period? And we've just come off a launch. So all of this stuff happening to me happened at a period of time when I really didn't want it to happen. 
I really wanted to be at the top of my game all the time, but I wasn't, you know, that's the reality. So here's my tips for at these periods of time where you're launching something or you're having a campaign and it matters. Here's what my advice for myself also, <laughs> just to say, okay, so yeah, first thing, be mindful of when you choose to launch. Look at your calendar, look at your, what's happening in the business, look at what's happening in your life and don't choose a time. Choose a time when there is the least amount of stress when you have a good lead time ahead of you, when you have time to be at your best, when your back is not to the wall, making sure that you have the optimum conditions to have a successful launch. Choose carefully. Many people choose launch periods because they have to. I have to launch something. I have to have that cash coming into my business. I have to launch. Take it from me, having worked with so many people over the years, that it never succeeds as well as it could have if you waited a little longer or chose a different time that you could give it what it needed to succeed because you could be fully present in that launch period okay so choose not in isolation choose when you know okay this is a really good time personally and professionally to launch to do this big thing that you want to do consciously choose it. Don't just have it chosen for you by conditions or the circumstances. Con consciously choose it. It will make the difference to the level of success of the launch. And it means that you will crack that piece of the puzzle, of the marketing puzzle for your business that will help you go to the next level. Really, really important. Okay. Next one for you. Give yourself a minimum three month lead time for launching anything. Many people talk about a 30 day launch period. I talk about a 30 day launch, lean, you know, a lead up to a launch, a 30 day period. But that 30 days is bang, 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 all of the things directly in play for you to actually have a successful launch. Here's a piece of information that's really useful. Your, when you are opening to a new audience, right? And ultimately everyone should be opening to a new audience, should be expanding their reach expanding their audience to actually continue to grow the business, to continue to take it to the next level. So you're always welcoming new people into your ecosystem. Remember this, it takes six weeks from the first minimum, six weeks from the first point of entry of a potential customer into your ecosystem from day one to ultimate purchase. They need a minimum of six weeks in your ecosystem to buy something. So if you sandwich your launch, trying to reach a new audience, it's not possible to do that in 30 days. To do it with comfort and to have the best, the optimum results, the optimum return on investment for that launch for you, you need six weeks. But I advocate strongly that you give yourself three months. So that is 12 weeks. Because in that build up period, you have so much prep to get ready to bring them the whole way through this funnel for you, whatever kind of launch it is. It's never a simple case of just telling people I have a new product. You have email sequences to write. You have webinar slides to write. You have some kind of if you have a store, you have a physical makeup to actually set up in your store. You have social media to craft. You have to make sure that the language is right and you need time to get the right language to reach the ears of the customer that you're targeting. And you have to bring them. It's this idea of coaching the conversion. Bring them from not knowing you to knowing you to liking you to trust you. That takes a minimum of six weeks and you have the optimum time of three months as a tangible period of time to actually get them in the door and cross the line and pressing buy or going to your tail and purchasing. Now, obviously lead times would be different for different industries. Know the lead times for your own industry, but as a rule of thumb, it will never be shorter than three months. Never be shorter than three months. Take it on board. Don't get swept up by the immediate need for something. Give it the time it deserves.
okay? If there is a cash requirement in the business that you have to fulfill in the short term, there's a faster way of doing it than a bigger launch. So every time you're doing something that's important in your business, give it adequate time to make it happen successfully, okay? The other thing I'd say to you is, you know, for the whole, from the whole self-care perspective is, we often talk about backlogs. I say to you, build a front log. Make sure that you're four weeks ahead of time for everything that is repeatable. So are you four weeks ahead of time for your podcast episodes? Are you four weeks ahead of time for your social media? Are you four weeks ahead of time for your blog? Whatever it is in terms of something that's repeatable, get to a point. And it takes time to do this. And I know when I took a month off, I used up my front log. Be fast enough to get ahead of your log again. Get four weeks ahead of time. That gives you the window to have those moments where you're not at your best. And we need those. We need that reassurance of, it's okay, I have a front lock. No more back lock, just a front lock. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this. Please do comment below. And let me also say this to you, relax, celebrate the wins. Everything will be okay. This too shall pass. Love to hear what you think. This has been Ask Finola How. This has been episode 55. Can't believe it's 55. <laughs> episode 55. And as always, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Take care and have a great day.